I'm Reverend Therese Lee, and this is Unity Spiritual Center, Hilton Head Island, South Carolina. Today, it is Palm Sunday. It's a big day. It's the first day in the week that changed the world. Not only for you, for me, and many, many others. And so let's close our outer eyes, as we always do in unity, and start in prayer. Take a moment, concentrate on your breathing. Living, loving presence, we are grateful for this day, for this holy week we are embarking on. The reminder of the holiness that each of us is. We are grateful for unity. We are grateful for this internet that allows us to, in fact, share our energies and share our presence. And so it is, we are grateful when we say thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. I'm Reverend Therese Lee. This is Unity Spiritual Center, Hilton Head Island, South Carolina. Please put your name in the box. Let us know where you're from. If you have a prayer intention, if you would like to be on our e-news and anything else you want us to know, we will, in fact, respond to you. A really big day in the world of those of us that have Jesus as one of our way showers in the scheme of life. And that's what we do at Unity. We use how he lived as the example of how you and I get to live. We don't should live because we don't should on each other. When we should, it gets smelly. So let's embark on this Holy Week adventure together. If you watch us on Facebook and every day there'll be a post about something that's happening during this Holy Week. Such an exciting time. Scripture in Matthew, verse 21, 9. Then the multitudes who went out before and those who followed cried out saying hosanna to the son of david blessed is he who comes in the name of the lord hosanna in the highest what we're going to do is unpack this historical monumental story and how it is it applies to us to you and to me so this was the Last week, as we're told of Jesus's earthly time on this planet, and like I said before, the week that changed the world, I want to pose a question to you. What if you had one week to live? What if in that short period of time, you had so much to say to your children, your family, and you had to condense it into just one week. You knew that when you walked up to them, you were going to take this time to spend with 12 members of your family to try to make points that you want them to remember because you know that you only have one week left. You also know that if you don't give the message in a way where they can get it, they may not live it. And that way then hmm, everything could be lost. And you also know that it's up to them now. It's not up to you anymore. Seven more days for you to live. Well, this was the burden that was on Jesus that Palm Sunday as he arrived into this holy week, into the holy city. He knew what was going to happen. Everybody breathing? Palm Sunday is the day where he told two of his disciples to go get him a cult. And they did, and they brought the colt back. No, never mind, y'all, that 
Jesus was known for walking everywhere, mile after mile in the countryside. And he made the decision on that Sunday, the beginning of Holy Week, to ride a colt down a small path for the last four miles. Now we know metaphysically four is such a big number that represents stability and foundation. So of course it would be four miles. We're going to unpack this story so you can wear it and be it this week. It's so great. It was a day of triumphant entry. Not so much into Jerusalem, the story says, rather into the hearts and minds of the people, into something they could witness and then live their lives by. So this is why you and I are going to understand this great day and how it is we can live into it. And you're thinking, well, Therese, how can a story about Jesus riding on a colt down a path into Jerusalem make a difference in my life? I love that you ask questions. Keep asking them, please. I ask that you allow me to share from the Gospel of Mark. It was the first gospel written, not so when you read your Bible, because it shows up as the last one, but actually, factually, historically, first story written. And we're going to unpack it so we can see how we apply it. And it begins in Mark chapter 11, verse 1. And when they drew near to Jerusalem. Now, metaphysically, as we read the Bible, we get to understand that names and cities have importance to us and what they mean. Jerusalem means the habitation of peace. Of course it does. Of course that's why Jesus was going there. In the world that was a little cray-cray then for him, hmm, like it is now, I invite us all to make time to go into our own place of Jerusalem, to have our own inhabitation of peace. Because I bet there's been a time where you were getting close to peacefulness, possibly a state in your mind, and so close you can feel it, and yet, even though you're walking in the direction, you don't quite get there. I didn't quite make it, right? Now it changes depending upon which story you're in for your own life and for my own life. For this story, what we want to remember is as we enter into this place of peace, we realize God's presence. So let's realize that right now, wherever you are, whatever time it is that you're watching me, whichever day that you're with us, let it be the habitation of peace now. And so we breathe into that moment, this moment that we're creating for ourselves, wherever we are. It's the shift within us, the inner revelation that knew, that knows, that believes and trusts that we are not alone. The presence of God is always and in always with us, surrounding us, working in through and as us. I invite you to maybe make a plan about changing some of the ways that you do things, some of the ways you respond, some of the ways that your life is showing up and accept the grace of peace this day. Before Palm Sunday, as Jesus arrived into Jerusalem, right, he said to the two disciples to go and 
get the um, cult. So what we want to unpack, first of all, is that two for us means that you've heard this, wherever two or more are gathered, so am I. The so am I is God reminding us about the presence always and always around us. So we have the two people walking their disciples to get the cult and also the presence of God with them as they make their way. This is the reminder for you and me where two or more are gathered. You're having a prayer meeting. Oftentimes when I'm out on the beach walking, there's a bird and a pelican or two bird, just two little birds. And we have ourselves a prayer meeting. Wherever two or more are gathered, there am I in the midst of it all. You're in a partnership for business, in a relationship. Remember to add in the presence as you make decisions, as you live and declare your love. So in the midst of the three, there is always God. The directions were to go into Jerusalem, into the village, to find a cult that had never been ridden and bring it back to Jesus. Those were the directions. And he said to the disciples, if someone asks you, why are you taking my cult? Right? If if they chose not to ask, he instructed the disciples to, in fact, respond with, the Lord has need of it. Okay. So it happened. Something was going on. They found the cult. They got, they were, it was never ridden. They were able to bring it back to Jesus and then realize as we can in our own lives that there's something bigger than us, something wonderful that is surrounding us and making it so for us. And we don't always have to know the why of it or the way of it. That's the micromanager in each of us. Let it go. It's time for Lent. Let's eliminate negative thinking. Are you willing to feel something beyond your own activity of mind, your own words and your own actions? Something inside of you on this first day of the Holy Week for us so that you can journey into your own Jerusalem state of consciousness? The answer is yes. The answer is yes. When the two disciples brought the colt back to Jesus, they threw their cloaks over it. Over the um, the colt itself, on the ground, and all along the path, they took their garments and threw them. Leafy branches from the palm trees, hence it's Palm Sunday, and then... Jesus started riding on the colt. It's a sign of welcome, right? Each person, as they laid down their colt, or their, I mean, their um, wrap or their shirt before the colt, each time they laid a palm branch down, they were saying, we honor you. We honor you. So take a moment, put your hand on your heart and say to yourself, I honor me. I honor me. Scripture tells us that they laid these cloaks before Jesus and the colt, and he rode across them. Those who walked before Jesus and those who followed Jesus were crying out, Hosanna, Hosanna. Metaphysically interpreted, the meaning of Hosanna, save now. 
Isn't it great? So when you're in the midst of something that's hurting you or something that feels uncomfortable, we too could cry, save now, save myself from these thoughts that are making it bigger, uglier than it is. Save now. As Jesus was riding, he knew that he was going to save the holiday, so to speak, from the Russian, from, excuse me, Roman soldiers that were on the other side of town having their own parade with horses that represent uh, law and order. And that's why Jesus chose a cult. The whole message of this Holy Week in the Bible about Jesus and the Christ consciousness that Jesus was coming from that day, because remember, Christ is Jesus's job description not his last name. And it's telling us we can have our help now. Each time we allow it to stay unblocked, when we are able to stay in the moment and embrace the very presence of God instantly, quickening in the moment, the now moment. The crowd, as it gathered, and gathered and gathered before him as he wa- led the colt walking. He rode the colt and they, the people were walking behind him. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The name of the Lord means nature. Blessed is Jesus who comes in the nature of the Lord. This stuff is great. We'll have a class this week on unpacking the rest of this whole story. So stay tuned. Jesus is on the colt. It's a very small donkey. Now you would think, as I said, that maybe the king would come in on a horse. However, Back in those days, horses only represented the cavalry or the military. And that was so not the message that Jesus was bringing. It teaches us several things. First, it doesn't matter what's outside of you, how it is you got, what your mode of transportation was, so to speak. It's what's inside of you that then will be making manifest into a demonstration. That's what Jesus was teaching us that day as we read the story. It's all inside of us. And we get to get rid of the cobwebs and all of the negative things that we're fasting from so that, in fact, we can demonstrate this peace. We can demonstrate the love that we are now in this very moment, because as we know, it's the only moment we are sure of, right? Everybody breathing? It's a great story. The colt had never been ridden. Now, I'm wondering if you were, you and I were going to be making this entry into Jerusalem, maybe we would have asked for a colt that had been ridden before, tamed and trained, right? Because seriously, it could have bitten somebody or, you know, bucked them off during the ride. And the path was very narrow. People on both sides. Hmm. The cult may have reacted. There were children, small children, waving the palm branches as Jesus was riding through, sitting on the colt that had never been ridden. He had no fear that this colt would attack one of these children. 
Take a listen. Jesus sat on the colt and overpowered the animal nature in the colt with his Christ consciousness and prayerful presence. Everybody breathe. Have you been in a situation? Not yet today, maybe, that has called for you to overpower those animal type instincts within us and breathe. That's why we recognize Jesus as the great way shower. He always taught with each statement, each action, very deliberately. Teaching us how it is that we can be ordered like we've been talking about with our 12 powers. And it stems back to the story in Genesis where we've talked about dominion. We've also talked about it on a Sunday recently, right? The dominion that we have within ourselves, the power within us to have no little thought, ego-driven, have its way with us, to outpicture as us. No. We call forth the dominion and the power that will allow us to raise our consciousness to that of the Christ within us. And then when we're not paying attention, those little animals get us, right? It's called monkey mind. It's called having a gripe. We have dominion over that. We have dominion over the appearance of sickness that makes manifest in our body. We have dominion over the thoughts of mm, yuck or mm, there's no sunshine, whatever it is. Maybe you're just not happy today. We have the dominion over it to say, wait a minute, I am going to draw forth the powers from within me and get back to my Christ consciousness. Because it's not the human part of us that has dominion. It's the Christ consciousness within us that gets us realigned back to right thinking and tames all of those other, what Charles Fillmore calls animal thoughts, the lowly thinking. Now we know that there was not much time on this Sunday. Everything that Jesus did was for the benefit of the 12 that followed him and also for you and for me. Because every Sunday we tell you we get to follow how Jesus lived his life so that we may have life and have it more abundantly, right? Jesus making the determination, the domin using his dominion to discern that he was going to have a triumphant entry into this habitation of peace on the same day that the Romans were having their big parade. He knew it would cause great attention. He knew he was already under the microscope so to speak. He had a teaching to share. He had a lesson to demonstrate through riding the cult, allowing himself to be adored, walking a thin path, four miles, knowing he was going to be in the habitation of peace when he reached Jerusalem. Hosanna, Hosanna, saving the people by demonstration as he rode the colt. Are you willing? Are you willing? Can you stand strong enough in the convictions of knowing that something must be said or demonstrated and that you make your way the path to do that? That's what this Holy Sunday is about. 
Palm Sunday. A brilliant day in our consciousness. So take a moment and close your outer eyes. Hosanna, Hosanna. Save us now from our negative thinking. Save us now from our less than loving attitudes. And remember, we do the saving of ourselves, not something outside of us. We engage our divine mind and let the small M mind be let go. Bid it adieu. Bye-bye. Thanks for leaving now. It's a holy week full of Holy Monday, Holy Tuesday, Holy Wednesday, Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and then Holy Saturday. So look online for the messages that I'll be sending. If you'd like to get those emails, make sure to put your email in the box. And now we're going to move into a time of quiet, a time of meditation and prayer together, you and I. So close your outer eyes as you're comfortable and breathe into this moment. When we use our breath as a tool, it takes us ever deeper within where each of us meets the God of our own understanding. And as we breathe into knowing the very presences around us, we ponder on the truth of God, that God is and we are. I am. Say it with me to yourself. God is, we are, I am. Each time we make the conscious effort to relax into the presence that is surrounding us, we are able to feel the reassurance of all that will be revealed to us. We let go the attachment of what it should look like after we've set the intention of what we would like it to look like. We release the tension, the anxiety, and breathe. And so we take a conscious deep breath yet again. And we exhale. We make a conscious effort each day to open our minds and our hearts. And especially this week, the week that changed our lives before we even entered this world, this week of majestic overtures in claiming the truth that Jesus knew about himself. owning his divinity while he was having some very human experiences this week. As we let go and we let God, we are able to stay centered, calling forth the abilities to do what is ours to do, the abilities to be who we've come here to be. And so let's sit with that the allness of us in the silence.
Blessed are you who come in the nature of yourself to do the will and the work. As you bring your attention back to this time and this place and these sacred and holy grounds we call Unity Spiritual Center, Hilton Head Island, and wherever you are, we are grateful. So share some of that energy, put it up to the screen and let us know the magnificence of you. And as you're so moved, we gratefully receive here at Unity at P.O. Box 1392, Bluffton, South Carolina, 29910, Unity Spiritual Center, Hilton Head. Or on our website, www.unityofhiltonhead.org, where there is a practice generosity button that you push and use PayPal or use your credit card. So celebrate yourself this week. Embrace the wholeness of you, the holiness of you during this holy week. Allow yourself to be changed yet again as we continue to be who we've come here to be and on purpose. Many blessings, Reverend Therese signing off, Unity Spiritual Center, Hilton Head Island, South Carolina. Have a blessed holy week. And so it is. Amen.